There's not much left of Bursco Priory, just a large buggered door frame in somebody's private garden, which is why we couldn't get much footage of it. It's hardly surprising there's not much left though, given the rough ride it had during the dissolution. The Abbey itself was founded by Robert Fitzhenry, Lord of Latham, in 1190, dedicated to St Nicholas, aka Santa Claus, and included the usual leper hospital, which seemed to be in great demand back then. Seriously, it was worse than Covid. In 1190, the Manor of Laven passed to the Stanley family, ancestors on my mother's side from whom I inherited bugger all apart from gout. In 1286, the Priory opened its own market, as you do, which was successful enough until 1536, when Henry VIII's dissolution hit town. Quite a few of the Stanleys were buried there, so they had to be shifted to the Derby Chapel in the Church of St Peter and St Paul at Ormskirk, which had been hanging around since Saxon times. The Stanleys had their own chantry, commissioned by Thomas Stanley in 1500, at Latham House, along with the still-standing almshouses. As a quick aside, apparently Shakespeare played Latham House in 1587, although whether it was cricket or marbles or some other game, history doesn't record. The chantry is potmarked allegedly with musket ball holes from the English Civil War. In the driveway you can still find Cromwell's stone, where, according to legend, Cromwell's troops cast the aforementioned musket balls used to perforate the chantry with. Going back to the dissolution, one of the bodies that had to be moved from Bursco Priory to Ormskirk Church was that of Thomas Stanley, the bloke who switched sides when he realised that Richard III was losing at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485 and lobbed said Richard's head off. Another belonged to James Stanley, responsible for the Massacre of Bolton during the English Civil War. He was beheaded in 1651, his body being buried in one coffin and his head in another. Eight bells were shifted along with the Stanley Stiffs, so a tower had to be added to Ormskirk Church in order to house them because the existing steeple wasn't big enough. The bell still on display inside the church, it has to be said, is bloody massive. As a result, you now have one of the weirdest looking churches in Britain. Naturally, folklore takes a different slant, claiming that Orm the Viking had two quarrelling sisters, so he built both a tower and a steeple to keep the peace. Spike Milligan even wrote a poem about it, which runs, A lady from Lanx said aspire is what every good church should desire. But her sis with a glower said a church needs a tower, so they built one with both, and it's dire. As you might expect, Ormskirk Church has retained quite a bit of history over the centuries. The earliest bit of the building can be found in the north wall of the chancel, dating from 1170, with its Norman window. On the south side there are two arches, dating from 1280. Going off at a slight tangent, the church warden's accounts for 1665 record a number of payments made for the destruction of vermin, including orchids, hedgehogs, peanuts, magpies, gels, jays, and moulders, moles. Poor bloody hedgehogs. I hope the church warden was eaten by slugs. On another slight tangent, Ormskirk's stocks used to be kept in the church tower and erected by the church gates when required. Whether they're still in there or not, I honestly couldn't say. Just another couple of side notes about Ormskirk before we continue. According to the Victoria County history, in 1635, Ormskirk was the seat of the glove trade, and in modern times is famous for its gingerbread production. Presumably that's only famous around Ormskirk, because I'd never heard of it until Michelle researched it. Anyhow, before we leave this neighbourhood entirely, worth a mention is the plough across the road from the church, or the turquoise as it's known nowadays, which was said to be haunted, and probably still is, by Nancy Bolshaw, the innkeeper there in the 19th century. Apparently she was awoken from the afterlife after a drunkard crashed his car into the pub, causing thousands of pounds worth of damage and the sudden need for more customers to pay for it. 
Nancy obviously wasn't a very good innkeeper, seeing as she now throws gin bottles at customers' heads, moves optics dangerously in their cradles, and spins the charity collection box round on its cord. Her corporeal remains are buried in the churchyard across the road, but her essence, it seems, prefers to remain amongst the more intoxicating spirits. Whatever the case, the ghostly publicity didn't appear to work because the building is now a Turkish restaurant, on which note it's time to bugger off.